feel like you need a whole no, fifty sleep. I don't. I just want, want us to hear it. You don't need what we need. Yes. yes. Course, right? I promise you, it is, it is here right now. Yeah. It and I told you, you, even what I said before service, <laughs> I didn't know the songs that counted. No, she didn't, because yeah. I changed them this morning. So I have no idea, but it, <laughs> the Holy Spirit is flowing, I'm going to tell you, mm -hmm. because even oh. what she spoke. <laughs> yeah, it had your way in this meeting. So Lord Jesus, I just thank you, God, for your presence this yes, morning, Lord. Lord. I thank you, God, that we're hungry, God. We're yes. hungry, not after the things of this world, God. But, Lord, we are running hard after you, God. Your presence is all we desire this morning, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Lord, we thank you, God, that you met us here this morning. Yes, we thank you, God, that you're going to be with us even as we yes. leave and go home, Lord. Because, Lord, we're so hungry and thirsty yes. after you. We're running. Lord, we're like the deer. That panteth after you, God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I ask, oh God, that you would just take over, God. Take over this service. You speak the words out of me, oh God. You let it come with such passion. But Lord, with understanding, with counsel, and let every heart here and even on the media understand it, God. Accept it as rainbow word and make a decision to choose life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, the enemy has fought me on this word for a week, week and a half. The Lord has been saying, This is what I want. I want you to speak about life or death, yes. blessings or curses. Yeah. you got to choose this day. And I redid this all day yesterday. I started at 9 and didn't get finished till 9. Wow. 12 hours. But I believe it's what the yes. Lord desires wow. to speak. Gosh. So, you know, even as of last week or the week before, you know, we talked about God begin our daily bread. We sung about it this morning. He's our daily bread. We've got to eat of his word every single day for us to be strong in the Lord and to get the right yes. nutrients for our spirit man. We cannot be maltreated in the spirit. That's right. We've got to be so full of him that when we meet people, all they see is Christ. We gotta be lost to be found. Mm. Mm. Okay? And and I truly believe that if we would just realize and accept that we have been rescued by God, He liberated our spirit, then the choice is easy. We're going all the way with God. So we gotta understand what does it mean to choose life or death. It's not just in the natural. It's in the spirit realm. Are you choosing life for your spirit? Or are you choosing to spiritually die? Hmm. That's the question. That's right. Okay? Now, I pulled out some Old Testament scriptures. But I'm going to tell you they still resonate for today. In Deuteronomy 7... For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be the people for himself. A special treasure above all the people yeah. on the face of this earth. Did you hear that? I mean, I, I, I kept going over it and over it. It, it just wasn't good enough because I realized even typing this up that I'm holy unto the Lord. Yes. Wow. That he chose me. 
I might have needed him. I might have been a sinner. And I might have been doing things out in this world that was causing me to die. But the Lord failed me. I didn't find him. Mm -hmm. He good. chose me and pulled me up out of that miry clay. And he set me up on his holy hill to be his special treasure. Wow. That right there settles it. We can go home. There you go. It doesn't matter what we go through on a daily basis. If you get this in your spirit, nothing can hold you back. That's right. Because you're not, you know, living in shame. You're not living in guilt. You don't need deliverance. Because this should have liberated you yes. right here. Hmm. See, it's God is a covenant-keeping God. He's a man that cannot lie. And he even tells you in his word that yes be yes and no be no. But he also says, for whatever is more than these, it is from the evil one. Hmm. What is that saying? That when you live a double standard life, a wavering person, unbalanced, double minded, then you evidently are not operating out of the Spirit of God. That's good. Because He tells you, let your yes be yes and your no be no. No in betweens, no gray areas. I believe that, you know, in the natural people say, oh, you got to have a gray area. No, ma'am. When it comes to the things of God, it's yes or it's no. It's no in between because I am not going to have a double-minded standard and be unwavering and tossed from here and there. I'm stable because the Lord makes me stable. I'm his chosen person. I'm a treasure above all people. And it wasn't anything. We, he, he said, Israel, it's not because you're a great people or you're big in numbers. It's simply because I chose you because I love you. And I want to spend time with you. No other reason. Wow. Can you love that deep. In verse 8. Of Deuteronomy 7. It says. But because the Lord loves you. And because he would keep the oath. Which he swore unto your fathers. That shows you. He is a man that cannot lie. And that he has integrity. He's high in integrity. He said, we're his holy people, chosen to be his people, a special treasure to himself. And because of that, I'm going to keep my word. Christ is the picture of integrity, a high quality of being honest and having a strong moral principle. He does not lie. Been accused yesterday that I'm a liar. Hmm. Wow. No, I'm not. Because I stand on the word. Yeah. I don't need to lie because my yes is yes and my no is no. Thank you, Jesus. See, it is faith. You've got to put your faith out there. When you believe every word, it's so easy to follow him. It's when you are lack in faith, you're not prayed up, you haven't been in his presence, no change is happening, you're still unstable. You're still wavering. You still have unbelief. <laughs> and so you're spiritually dying. This day you must choose whom you shall serve. Deuteronomy 8.1, it says, Every commandment, which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply 
and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. Are you possessing the land? Is your life multiplying? You know, multiplication is more than just children. That's right. That's your heritage. But are you multiplying spiritually? Are That's you good. are you multiplying health wise? Are you multiplying yeah. wealth wise? Are you reaching your golden destiny? It's all of those things to live a life of multiplication. Now look what he says here in three. I put out there, possess. Process, excuse me, process. Because he says, so he humbled you. This is when you were out in the wilderness, in the desert for 40 years. You may not be 40 years old, but you're still we're in a desert. So look at yourself. Look on the inside of where you are, where you've been. He says, so I humbled you. I allowed you to hunger and you fed with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Now that's Old Testament. Again, he's telling you that he's sending Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and that every word that comes out of their mouth as the Trinity, the three in one, that it's truth. You can rely on it. You can put your faith out there. When, when you love someone, you choose to listen to them. When you are married or in a relationship, you have to agree. Like Laura said today, Matthew 18, 19. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they will ask, it will be yeah. done for them by the Father who is in heaven. That's good. So when you agree, you're one. When you agree, his presence is there. And he, you got to stand on his word. It's not a lie. That's right. It's the truth. As Christians, we need to follow the moral law, which is summarized in the Ten Commandments. Right. Even though we're under grace, we follow mercy and grace. And the love of the Father, we get saved, salvation, deliverance, freedom, rescue, all of those wonderful things. But it comes down that you've got to morally follow the Ten Commandments. It is indeed binding even for us today. They were given to help us live a blessed life. That is good for us and it glorifies our Lord. You can't live like a, a hellion and expect to step into his presence. You can't do it. That's right. He, if he says, I called you to be a holy people. That's right. We can't have one foot in hell and the other foot in heaven. And act like we're going to balance ourselves. That's right. We're going to slip and fall and right into the pit again. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Here it is again. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you. That I have set before you life and death. Yes. Oh my God. Heaven and earth are witnesses. Can you imagine what does heaven look like? It's it's the twelve elders. It's the holy angels. It's Christ sitting on the right hand side of the Father. God being the judge of the earth. And they're witnesses today that we must make a choice to live Christ or to die spiritually. No in between. 
blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. That you may love the Lord your God. That you may obey His voice. And that you may cling to Him. For He is your life and the length of your days. You want to live a long life? Obedience is key. Yes. You want to be 90 and look 70? Key. Obedience. You want to have a, a, a healthy, wealthy life? Key. Obedience. That's right. That's good. Now, I, I, I just wanted to touch base on this. Blessings and a curse. It is both a benefit and a burden. It can be beneficial to you or it can br bring unforeseen negative consequences. Wow. Now that's a two-sided coin. You can choose to be blessed and every promise that is written in that word that's is right. yours. Or you can be rebellious and not live for God with the fullness therein. And you can bring negative consequences on your life. A curse. You need to go and read Deuteronomy where the curses are. Right. I, I had a whole page written up and I erased it. <laughs> because I said, no, that's not where I need to go. Because you need to go do your that's homework right. and study it for yourself. Amen. But you got a paragraph this big that says all the blessings, and then you got two whole pages of curses that you choose to live that way, and they come upon your life. And then you want to blame God when it's nothing but flesh. Mm -hmm. The lust of the flesh that you choose That's over cool. being holy. See, when we learn the word and eat our word and be like that cow that's sitting in the pasture and just chewing on that word. He tells you everything that you need. And it guides you all through life. So you choose to live it well or you live it with negative consequences. That's your choice. Obedience is so important to God. Why? Obedience is the way to worship Him and a way to get closer to Him. It causes you to be intimate. Like worship this morning. It was intimate. It pricked our hearts because we knew His presence was here. It prepares you for whatever He leads you to do. He doesn't lead you down the path of destruction. That's the work of the devil. That's right. Because he's here to kill, steal, and destroy. But the Lord is here to give us life and more abundantly. He wants you to live it so abundantly that you have everything that you have need of. Yes, Lord. He says, if I can feed the birds of the field, mm. how much more will I feed you? Feed on his word. Stay in his presence. He prepares you for whatever he leads you to do. And to grow as a person. It's an individual walk. And then you're married. And so then it becomes a walk between the two. But you're still individuals because you're one. But how much more powerful because you become in unity with the person you're with and the devil ain't going to get through it. There's a three-strand cord. Yes, Lord. You, your husband, your wife, and the Holy Spirit. There's no room for anybody else. When we obey, obey it pleases the Lord. He blesses us. I believe he smiles down upon us. But when we are in outright rebellion, it saddens him. 
He's my father. Let me bring it down to reality. He's my father. And so if he tells me to go do something and I don't go do it, yeah, he probably gets mad and he wants to whip us. But I think that he's a little pricked in his heart first. And I think he's sad. When, when your kids, Laura, don't listen to you, it affects you. So how much more do you think it affects our Heavenly Father who has let His Son come down and die for you? It's like we don't believe Him or His Word. And if it's your yes is yes and your no is no, but any... But anything more than that is the work of the evil one. You're choosing to live for the evil one and not God. Rebellion is not of God. And the right, it tells you in the word that it brings a curse upon your life. These are not my words. The, I believe his follows you in life. Obey whom the Lord has put over you. Your husband, your boss, your mother, your father, even your police officers. Right. Everybody that is in authority, humble yourself and say, I believe. They put, God's put a pastor over you, not to control you, but to lead you, guide you, where you don't fall short and into the pit and die. Mm-hmm. Now let me read Deuteronomy 11, 26, 28. It says, Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. See, he said it before you so you could look at it. A blessing and a curse. Balance. The blessing, if you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I command you today, and a curse if you do not obey the commandment of the Lord your God. So you got to choose. Do you want to live in the blessings or do you want to live in the curses? Wow. Now let me tell you what Jesus says. He said in John 14, 15. If you love me, you will obey what I command. Mm-hmm. It simply comes down, do you love yourself more than Christ? That you are self-centered? That you uh, become uh, so righteous that you know earthly good because religion comes in? Or you humble and, and you know that you're here because you love the Lord with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all your mind, and all your strength. What is the biblical meaning of obedience? In the Greek and in the New Testament, it means to trust. That's good. Do you trust his word? Another definition is to hear God's word and act accordingly. It's faith acting like it's true. Your faith is already acting like it's true because you've been activated by his living word. It's powerful. It's like a two-edged sword. It divides the very intent of your heart. He already knows if you're really in it or you're not. That's right. You just got to choose which are you. That's right. Because, oh my God. I believe that God is so merciful and so tender and so in love with us that even if we would just say, God, I surrender this morning. I give you my all, my everything. He's right there. He's right there to pick you up and to love on you and to woo you and to bless you with everything that your little heart desires. Yes, Jesus. As Christians, we still need to follow the moral law, which I, I summarize as being the Ten Commandments. To have a blessed life, 
and to glorify our Father. But on the other hand, it's your decision. He's giving you a free will because he wants to know that you love him enough that you choose life. That's right. Now, you need to go read this for yourself, but I wanted to throw out an example. You know, Saul was a very handsome man. And God chose him the first king of Israel. And I believe that pride kind of got up in his heart. Mm -hmm. And instead of listening to the Lord completely and fully and letting God lead his kingdom, he chose to rebel. So with that said, I picked it up in 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 33. So this is what Samuel said. So Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? It was a question for... Saul was asking Samuel a question. Or Samuel, what Samuel said, he was asking Saul a question. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. Wow. He had a whole kingdom before him. Hmm. He was over and sitting on a throne like a king. He had everything at his reach. All the riches, all the uh, food, all the glory. I mean, he had it going on. But because he allowed self to get in the way, yep. it caused his kingdom to be taken from him. Wow. I mean, that's a mouthful. That's you need good. to go read it. Because it doesn't matter what you sacrifice to God. It don't matter if you get the biggest ram and the and the, and the prettiest uh, lamb without blemish and go sacrifice it and have a burnt offering for sins and, and repent and all of that. It's your heart that he desires. That's right. And he knows if it's a good sacrifice or if it's just religion. That's good. He already knows. He's the he's the, he's God. He knows everything. He chose you, remember? So he knows your weaknesses and he knows your strengths. But you got to choose which way you go. Are you going to follow man? Are you going to follow the world system? Hmm. thought I might have missed a scripture. I wanted to look back quickly. <clears throat> if Saul would have done everything he was told to do, he would have been one of the greatest kings. But instead of being self-willed, he lost his kingdom. And the Lord raised up another one. So let me tell you, God is the one that promotes. That's right. He will raise you up and he will set you down. The minute you feel like you know everything, he's going to sit you down. Yeah. And then pastors get blamed for it. Hmm. Think about that. Yep. That's where you get self-willed -willed people and they raise themselves up and they think that they know it all. I was there before. I, I, I understand that. Obedience is hearing the word of God and acting on it. It is aligning our will to God's will. Doing what God has asked you to do. 
is when we completely surrender to his authority mm -hmm. and base our decisions and our actions yes. on his word. Mm -hmm. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord is true. Yes. Is this good? This is good. Oh my gosh, this is good. Now, we have a choice to make. Will we live or will we die? Mm -hmm. Will we live spiritually forever and eternity? Or will we choose spiritual death and burn in hell? Because that's where you're going. Point blank. That's what the word says. Over in Joshua 24, 15. See, they possessed the land. They crossed over. And Joshua had a job to do. He had to kill the ikes. And so he rose up and he told the people, This day, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Right. But for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. That's right. That's got to be over every doorpost in people's houses as a reminder of who rules and reigns in your house. Will you obey and choose life? See, we cannot serve God and the God of this world, which is money. We will live spiritually or die spiritually, but it's our choice. Here it is. Matthew 6, 24-26. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. I put it for emphasis, money. But it's more than money. It's the world system. That's right. Okay? Are you going to choose to to live as they're trying to direct us to that, you know, anything goes? Or are you going to stand on the word? Right. Whose report will you believe? Mm -hmm. You've got to line everything up in your life with the word because it is your lamp. It lights your path. That's right. It sets your feet on the straight and narrow. Mammon causes greed. I, I, I. It ain't I, I, I. The Ike's died. That's good. It's Lord, what can I do for you? I worship you. I will die for you. I will go to the ends of the world to preach you. It's about what we can do for God and not me, 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 I, I, I. That's right. Sell out. He told one of the, the, the disciples, sell everything you own and follow me. Take up my cross daily. Follow me. It's the same word mm -hmm. for you. He called you by name. He told you he knew you even before you were born inside your mother's womb. He numbered your hair. He knows your voice because it becomes a sweet aroma to his ears. you got to give him your heart. There's no room for disobedience. No room for sin. No room for error. You have to believe his word. He said earlier, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. Then you just entered into your promised land and your blessings. Mark 12, 29 to 30 says... The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. All three, one. 
And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and all your strength. Yes. I showed you in the beginning in the Old Testament, and I'm showing you in the New, because that's where we live. I don't want no one even on media to say, well, she's preaching the old. No, I'm preaching both because it brings balance. Yes. Okay? You're giving him your heart. And so part of that, you have no room for nothing else. Mm-hmm. You trust in him. When you build in a relationship... You trust that person. When you're building a relationship, you trust God. So your faith gets stirred, and then it becomes so unmovable and unshakable that you just stand. You become the watchman at the gate. You can discern and see by spirit the enemy coming. Now, I broke this down. So give me a minute. All your heart, that is talking about your whole spirit, your your whole desire, everything you give over to God. You just lay it out. I'm yours, God. I don't want no one or nothing to come between us. We're tight. We're intimate. With all your soul, when you give them your mind, your will, and your emotions, you will be stable, unwavering. You have completely turned your mind on the things above and not beneath. It's not all the riches of this world. You are what can you do for God? You're walking out the mind of Christ. You have completely given him your will. I will do out of the obedience of my heart everything your word says and to do your emotions. You turned your will over because your will is part of your soul. And your emotions are not all over the place that you look like you're bipolar. You're stable. You know who you are. Because you're balanced. Because he brings balance to you. You're level-headed. And because your emotions are balanced, you got health. And then you, you receive all the blessings. All the best life that you can even think of or imagine is right before you because you made the choice to live for God no matter the cost. That's right. If you have to stay single the rest of your life, choose that. Yes, Lord. So you can serve God mm. with everything that is on the inside of you. You will have time to pray. You will have time to worship. You will have time to study his word and to dig in there and to see what is the will for my life that the Father has for me. Yes. Are you, you you understanding? Sometimes, even though God has called us to be married, sometimes it's still a hindrance when it comes yes. to serving God because life gets in the way. That's right. And especially if you don't have a spouse that is so out with you. Yep. I lived that for 18 years. And I felt like I was the woman that was bent over and in bondage for 18 years. Mm-hmm. And the minute I said, over, I, I'm telling you, I've said it many times, I was, I said, I stood on Trenton, New Jersey, steps, and I I screamed so loud my attorney was frightened. <laughs> but I said, you don't understand, I've been in a birdcage for 18 years, 
And today he opened up the door and I'm flying high and I'm set free. Yes, Lord. I will never go back to that bondage. It was living hell. And I thank God that the Lord said, I have called you out of bondage into the peace of God. Yes. Peace is the bread that I chew on every day. Without peace, I cannot make it. Get balanced. Choose life. And then it says, all of your mind, your meditation is on him. Your whole thought, as soon as you open up your eyeballs, thank you, Lord, that I'm seeing another day. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God, that I have breath inside of me. His holiness, his goodness, his love. You'll be walking out blessings and having contentment. That is what so many people in life are missing is they don't know what true contentment is. And it's happiness and it's satisfaction and it's a lack in their life. But when you are so content, you have you don't envy anyone that has blessings. You're, you, you walk in out humility. You have discipline in your life. And then you start to abhor the greed and the corruption that's all around you. You hate. I've always said this in my younger days in ministry. Because back then I really dealt with a lot of drug addicts. And they didn't understand how to get out of addiction. And this is what I would say. You have to hate the sin in yeah. your life to get out of it. Yeah. If you don't hate the sin and how it's affecting your life and everyone around you, you'll never rise above it. And it's that simple. So when you start to abhor and hate the greed and the corruption that you see every day in life, you're going to stay in the midst. But when you can see the word, you can hear the what God is speaking, then you obey and you walk that out. Anything less than that is the work of the devil in your life. That's what the word said. Now, all your strength, all your strength, what does strength look like to you in the natural? One of them is easy. It's your muscles. When something becomes heavy in life, your muscles help you have the strength to pick it up. That's good. It's what you put all your energy into. And hopefully today, after today, it's because you chose to have life that you build a relationship with God. And that becomes your strength. Because he says, when you are weak, then he becomes strong for you. With all of your ability, all of your heart, holding nothing back. We won't have time to serve nothing else. We, we, don't, we won't be between two opinions any longer. Because if you remember when Elijah and Baal was in that fight, he told the people, you got to choose this day. You can't have two opinions no more. That's right. You're either going to serve Baal or you're going to serve God. That's right. So you're going to have the strength to make the right decision. Yes. That's what he's saying. 
I'm so glad I erased the pages yes, and did it all Lord. over again. Thank you, Jesus. I had to pray and seek God because I didn't want it to be information. I wanted to be able to bring conviction and to prick your heart. It had to be Holy Spirit. And then when we learn to love everyone else through the eyes of God, because we've learned to love ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because His Word says that we got to love our neighbor as ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think I, script, I, I missed that scripture. Let me see. It's, oh, I did, because on 31 it says, and the second. See, the first commandment mm -hmm. is to love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And the second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. These two. We have ten commandments morally that we live by. But these are the two commandments in the New Testament we are to live by. Because Jesus is on the scene and Holy Spirit. And so we don't have to live under law. Where it was so hard to deal with. But Jesus is telling you, I want you to love me with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And then you're going to love yourself. And then it's going to be easy to love your neighbor who you hate. Because sometimes you've got neighbors you just don't like. It could be the neighbor that you work with, your, your boss. See, it's not just your neighbor. It's everyone else you have to deal with in life. You're going to learn to love who you are. Yes. Because when you look in that mirror, you don't see the old you. Because the old you died at salvation. That's right. And the new man come about. And you activated him by the word. And the Holy Spirit keeps you stirred. That you love God. And if you love God, you have to love yourself. That's right. Because you're that picture of him. Hmm. Oh my God, so this is good. so good. Loving Christ is seeing your reflection of self in the mirror. And we imitate him by loving our neighbors. We could never fail nor die because we choose this life. That's right. This is the life we choose. The blessings above the curses. Yes, Lord. Then, then it's easy to obey his word. There is no other commandment greater than these. Mm -hmm. Then it's easy. I believe it was in the, in the beginning. Let me find it. It talked about hearing God. You hear God. You know His voice because you're His sheep. You're, yes. you're sheep. His sheep. You have all your spiritual senses tuned into God. You have no more distractions. You bring no more mixture or confusion in your life. Because your senses to see are so strong, you're like the eagle that soars above yes. every issues of life. And he has sharp sight that he can see miles and miles and miles. That's right. So your discernment is sharp. And then you have the senses of the ears. Yeah. That, oh my God, you know the very small voice is the Father's. That's so good. And when you got that type of senses, because you're so tuned into Holy Spirit, 
You cannot miss God. And you choose to, to do every word that proceedeth out of his mouth because you trust him. You love him. You desire to obey him above all else. Because the only else you have is to die. That's right. Wow. Hmm. And then others, your neighbors, they can see that you have spent time in the presence of God. Because you're permeating the fire, the zeal of the Holy Spirit. And they know that he's spoken to you because they see readily the obedience. They see that you have sold out because they can't even trick you into, into sin anymore. Hmm. Because you're so tuned in. You do what he's spoken to you. And you do it out of a willful heart of obedience. Yes, you have decided to make a choice to cling to him. For he is your whole life. And because of this you have lengthened your life. You've lengthened your life. Out of obedience. Because stress is the major killer. Yes, it is. But when you live in the peace of God, you just lengthen your days. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God, this is so good. It was well worth the 12 hours yes. of, of travail that I had to endure to get this word out of the way he wanted it to come out. Yes. How have you lengthened your life? Because you made a choice. You made a choice to live today and not die. When Michael was sick, and I know I use him a lot, and it's not that I'm putting my husband today down in any way, shape, or form because he's a wonderful man, but it's because I experienced God for the first time in my life. It was miracles. And it changed me and grew me up overnight. I remember the first time he ever went in a coma. We were in revival and I told my mama, I, I got to go. I, I, I just feel like I got to go. Stay here and take care of him. So she did. And I went to church and I ran up to my pastor and I said, can I choose life? This is where Michael was. It was, he had just went into the hospital. He had dehydrated. They were sending him home to die. And that he hadn't reached the house yet. But the ambulance was going to be bringing him the very next day to put him up in the bed to die. And this is where he was. So I was desperate. And I said, can I choose life or death for my husband for him to live? Because I choose this day for him to live and not die. Those were my exact words for her. And she stood and prayed with me. And when that man got home, he was, he was up out of the coma. He was, you know, ready to, to see me and grabbing after me and crying and saying, I saw him. That day, because I chose life for him and not death, the, the archangel Michael stepped through the door and said, this day you shall live. Yes. And he lived for seven and a half months past that. It works. The word works. When you are desperate and the one that you love is dying, you will do and say anything to reach God, but you're dying. Will you do anything to reach God today for yourself? He's here. He wants you to choose life. 
When it looks like the world, you, you, you stay in fear, you're fearful, you're worried, you're disappointed. It says, I do everything the Father has spoken to me to do. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, I choose. I choose life. And in that, because you choose that, you have peace. I decided to serve God, only God, no other master, which would lead me into death. The world system. I decided to serve, to seek after his righteousness, so I don't have to be concerned about nothing. It's just going to be added unto me. So you've already walking out health. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all things shall be added unto you. So why do you worry if your house note will be paid? Or where shall I live? Because God's already got it mapped out. Listen. And do according to what he's telling you. What he's showing you. Journal it. Write it down. And then let nothing or no one alter you from the plan of God that is set before you. I'm walking in peace that passes all understanding. My health is great even at my age. Mm. He has lengthened my life. I've learned to live in agreement to his word and to possess the land that is before me. We are about to possess and repossess and take back everything that has been taken from us over the years in our life. Carly, God took your daddy, but he is now your daddy. That's right. Let him heal you and let him woo you and let him love you as you're his daughter. Mm -hmm. Don't stay sick. Yes. Let it go. He knew he would die. He knew that eventually Michael would die. But he graced me for seven and a half months so I can learn to deal with it. He knew. And it's okay. It's okay that he took you. But oh my God, I would never turn back what I learned from that experience. Never. And you have a time today to experience that same thing, which is called life, if that's what you want. He's telling you, I've read and I ate his word. And I choose to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God because I trust Him. My faith is so large that nothing can come near me and discourage me. Because I live in peace that passes all understanding. When the world thinks that I should be fearful or when the world thinks that I should just lay down and die because I have no hope, He becomes my hope. Yes. He becomes my everything. I don't have to wander in the wilderness any longer and go look for bread. He is my bread. And then I've crossed over to the promised land and I'm eating the fruit of my labor, the good fruit. 
He says, come, taste and see the goodness of God. Every blessing I've learned, and, I've, and, and I'm the head and I'm not the tail. In all my life lessons, I've learned. And it's part of the blessings that I told you to go read. That we are the head and not the tail. That we are above everything that the enemy dishes after us because we're above. That's right. And not beneath. He can't touch me. We are the untouchables. That's right. If you really see yourself as untouchable, then you've got the strength to stand. My enemies, they become my footstool. He has opened up every good treasure unto me and my family. From generation to generation, from my children to their children and their children. A hundred generations. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's multiplication. I'm, I'm not stopping at three and four generations. That's right. I'm going for a hundred generations. Yes. Because I know my God. Now, I'm saying it this morning, but this, when I typed this up, and I, I, I was so in awe. I typed out what I heard. So listen. Fear not. I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That is the word of the Lord today for every one of us. Fear not, I am with you. He never leaves you, he never forsakes you. Be not dismayed, be not troubled. For I am your God. I'm your everything. I'm your Lord of Lords. I'm your King of Kings. I'm your Prince of Peace. I am everything to you. And I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. You don't have to do it in yourself. Thank you, Father. I will uphold you in my righteous right hand. The hand of power. You want power? Reach out and take his right hand. Yes. And he's going to pull you up out of that miry clay. See yourself as God sees you. And this is how he sees you. As a holy people unto God. As a chosen people for himself. And a special treasure above all other people on the face of this earth. That's how he sees you. He doesn't see your hurt. He doesn't see your disappointment. He doesn't see everything that you see. He thinks you're beautiful the way you are. So quit it. Accept who you are. <laughs> I, I, I gotta make a funny. I've always been between 100 pounds to 115 pounds. Okay? The enemy attacked my body. My thyroids were diseased, and they gave me a radiation pill. And in six months, my thyroid melted away and died. And then it threw my body into uh, I guess I call it shock. 
but everything I put in my mouth, I put on weight. And believe me, in that six months, my doctor told me, watch what you eat, because the weight that you end up with is the weight you will always be. And here I am putting on weight, and in my eyes, because I'm 115 pounds, and now I'm 152, that I am obese. Okay? And oh my God, I'm going through emotions, and I'm going through hating myself, and I'm, I, I, I can't even begin to tell you, but I'm sure you can relate. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, here comes this sweet little lady in church. And she said, hmm, you're getting fat. And I busted out crying because she did not know where I was. She did not know what I was physically going through and emotionally. But what God saw was me. I was beautiful on the inside and out. Yes, I had to let go of self. I had to die out to me. And I had to say, who cares if you're 115 pounds? You're still the same person God created at 152. That's in 1995. And today is 2023. Accept who you are. Quit killing yourself yes. because of shame. I take the shame off of you today yes. in Jesus' name. He made you. You're beautiful. That's right. You're his hidden treasure. You're a diamond in the rough, says the Lord. Let it go. Deliver her today, oh God. Yes, Father God. Know who you are. And don't let the world tell you anything else. That's right. <coughs> because they don't know or understand where you've been. That's right. Don't let the enemy get in your face and lie to you anymore. Choose this day. Whom you shall serve. Hmm. Now. Thank you. I'd like for you to stand up. And I want to activate the word in you. That we are not going to fear any longer or be dismayed. So we'll know who our strength is and our help, and that he will uphold us because we believe it. Yes. So repeat after me. Lord, Lord, help me this day. Help me this day. To trust you. To trust you. And only you. And only you. Lord, teach me. Lord, teach me. To love you. To love you. With all of my complete heart. With all of my complete heart. Let me be steadfast. Let me be steadfast. And have full effect. And have full effect. And full reign. And full reign. In my life. In my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, this day. Lord, this day. You have perfected me. You have perfected me. And I'm complete. And I'm complete. Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. And having perfect peace. And having perfect peace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you, God. Yes. We thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you. We thank you this morning, God, that you are our bread that brings life to us. You are our deliverance, God. Yes. And we choose you every mm. time. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you feel like that you need prayer or you, you need more than just... What I've given you this morning, come up. I'll pray with you. I'm here. 
if you want